Welcome back to your Smart Heart University. Uh, we lost Emilio. I wanted him to stay on, but uh, Dr. Kaiser really wants to make a comment real quick about yeah, that. Uh, Emilio, I just wanted to comment. Uh, it, I think it, for atrial fibrillation, it is, it's, it's not unreasonable to do some sort of assessment of whether or not you have blockages of the heart arteries because that can precipitate atrial fibrillation. Um, but just and in the, the past, we did that with nuclear yeah, stress and, testing. And, and, and again, or, or yeah, stress testing or, or, cardiac, or cardiac angiogram. Um, uh, the, the, I refer you to Smarter Heart University com and our show on atrial fibrillation for right. a little bit more information on that. My guess is if you've already had a cardiac MR and you've already had uh, an ablation, you probably fit in the category where you just have atrial fibrillation. Right. And like I tell the right. patient, the electrical system of your heart probably is just going to a little haywire, and the rest of the stuff without knowing your history may be okay. 20% genetic, yeah, and, just, and there's not much you can yeah, do about exactly. it when all else fails. But we did cover that on that show, Emilio. So if you're out there still listening, please go and listen to that. And then actually you can text us uh, on there, you know, write in an email and comment, and we'll be happy to answer that yeah, for you, the, and for, and for Facebook, all of you out there. The Facebook website also has uh, the, the – uh, hopefully the link to the atrial yeah. fibrillation support group yes, as well. Yes, we do. We we sponsor that very much, and we had Dave Berger from, from the AFib support um, um, group on our show at that time. So answer the, the prop quiz. A primary function of nuclear stress testing is to determine who needs cardiac catheterization. So of those with an abnormal stress test, how many, 20%, 40%, or 60%, have only a mild, less than 50% blockage at cath? 37% yeah. or close to 40% have less than a 50% coronary blockage leading to an unnecessary invasive and expensive uh, procedure exposing them to unnecessary radiation. 25 years now and eight greater than 8 million studies later, 8 million folks, cardiac practices utilize nuclear imaging as a cornerstone of diagnosing heart disease. And as we compare to the CAT scan angiograms, the nuclear test is best used for what we commonly refer to as an intermediate risk patient, somebody who has risk factors for vascular disease. The low-risk patient who is just referred, simply referred just because, and we see that every now and then, will often have a falsely abnormal or positive result. Your EKG will be bad or the images will be bad, and this leads to these unnecessary invasive procedures. On the other hand, the high-risk person um, uh, can have a normal study and have significant obstructive blockages that can, that can be completely missed and that can lead to possible devastating results. The crossroad of nuclear testing rests on its ability to, to either predict or diagnose heart disease effectively. That's that's the problem, and that's the solution. So overall, a normal study, if you have a normal stress, a nuclear stress test, it predicts a low risk of cardi uh, having a cardiac event um, over the next uh, one to two years. And basically, that's about a 0.6% chance of having a heart attack each year after that study. Now, if you're a high-risk candidate, a normal test uh, with a normal uh, study, it gives you only a 1% uh, chance of an event during next year. So you get 0.6 if you're low and 1% if you're high, even if you're considered to be high-risk if you have a normal study. Now, for those of you who have never had a nuclear stress test, the most common mistake I have ever heard is the statement, I'm not having that dye put into me. Uh, folks, the truth is there is no dye. We call it contrast. That is what we use in angiograms. Nuclear tests employ a radioactive isotope, and no, you will not set off the airport alarms, and you will not glow in the dark, which is odorless, it's colorless, it's not processed majorly by your organs. It is simply a tracer injected through an IV, an intravenous in your arm, after, before and after you have walked on a treadmill uh, or been given medication to simulate walking on a treadmill. This isotope makes a path from that vein in your arm through to your heart with every single beat of your heart. A camera then traces that path and gives us a lighted color of what is flowing normally and what is not. Now, a nice yellow-orange color before and after exercise and medication generally signifies no blockage or obstruction, at least less than 70%, and no color or reversibility of color defect may signify either a total or severe blockage of 70 to 99% in one or more arteries. Now, I stated generally signifies with the normal flow images because you can have major blockages in two, in two or all three of your arteries 
faking the doctor into thinking there's a normal blood flow, and this uh, we call we refer to as balanced reduction in blood flow or a balanced equilibrium. Where there's lots of different names. Um, this misses it can miss the whole picture and can be a very fatal mistake. I also stated may signify. Uh, that an abnormal uh, study is significant because you can have a shadow or an artifact upon one area of the heart from your gut and from the breast. It can be read falsely and and can be a major determinant to proceed unnecessarily to invasive procedures. Sometimes damned if you do, sometimes damned if you don't. Um, So this approach to determining stress test severity is in the eye of the beholder. I will often say this to patients when getting the result of any study, any study, folks, labs, echoes, et cetera. You're at the mercy of the quality of the machine, the quality of the technician performing it, and the ability of the physician reading it. Now, after all of this is said and done, the nu- the size of the nuclear defect, how abnormal the EKG, whether or not your blood pressure abnormally drops during this test, your heart rate fails to increase during the test, or whether transiently your heart size enlarges uh, during at peak exercise, all of these occurring at, you know, at peak exercise can determine how severe your nuclear study is. Now, perhaps the most important point for all of you to know about a nuclear stress test is that it cannot predict or detect a blockage less than 50% in your arteries. So this test will be falsely negative in this case, and yet you can have significant coronary disease. Uh, We've given you the same pop quiz on several of our shows. Which one can be more fatal in terms of blockages, a 30%, a 50%, or an 80% stenosis? Well, if you've listened to our cardiac markers show or a better diagnosis uh, of a heart attack show, you have known already that a 30 and 50% blockage are more or can be more vulnerable to rupturing or blowing up in the middle of the night and your EKG, and your symptoms, and nuclear tests were all normal prior to that happening. My quote, which contradicts a recent top TV medical show about whether or not stents save lives, and despite certain studies that reflect this uh, opinion, I've done catheterizations for the worst nuclear images and found absolutely nothing, and had perfectly normal images and had the worst arteries possible. So you have to take that with a grain of salt, folks, for another topic and another show, and we'll probably approach that one. But lastly, besides having multiple usual risk factors, such as high blood pressure and diabetes and early family history, what else makes you at least intermediate risk and and a candidate for a heart attack? Well, peripheral vascular disease, and we talked about it last week extensively, the legs or even the carotid arteries, atrial fibrillation like our caller had brought up, heart failure, or even just the inability to exercise or walk at any significant distance all places you at higher risk. How's that for a... That's a good once over <laughs> of nuclear stress testing, certainly. The best you know, I could. The, the, f- nuclear stress testing, I say, is a functional study. It looks to blood flow to the heart. It doesn't look to see if you have any disease. It looks to see if you have severe disease. And when w- we were first doing uh, stress testing, it was we didn't have all we had was angiograms to look for disease. And it's a nice screening test to see if you have severe disease. It does. There's a lot of data to predict, as you said, how risky it is to have a major blockages or. or a blockage or, or a heart attack in the next year or two. A lot of data to support that. Um, the stress test is very good. I often tell patients, as you said, if you're low risk, if you don't have any risk factors, a stress test, no, no test is 100%. So a stress right. test with nuclear imaging is about 90, 98, 96 to 98% accurate. So there's still going to be those false positives and you're going to end up with some sort of unnecessary test. Similarly, on the other end, if you're high risk, a normal stress test I'm not going to be comfortable with because a stress test is not 100%. So you can have a normal stress test, and you're still high risk. It's the medium risk patients, the medium risk where we're trying to find out, uh, trying to get you into are you really low risk or are you really high risk? Do I need to do something more f- for you? Do we need to press on with a, a, a more de- definitive study? And that's where nuclear stress testing has a lot of data behind it. It's a good, solid test. I'm not saying it's a, it's a horrible test. a good, solid test. It's a lot of foundation behind it, um, but it, you need to have it on the right person. But where we used to approach 
uh, yearly and, and after specific. Right. That's changed in that terms of changed. reimbursement, yeah, too. Yeah. Uh, pop quiz going out the break. Uh, using a coronary CAT scan angiogram instead of a catheterization for a patient with an abnormal nuclear stress test saves how much? $400, $800, or $1,000? I don't know, $800. All right, $800. Going out the break on your Smarter Heart University on AM 970, The Apple. More.